Incredible night at the Wells Fargo. I won't actually forget Bosey turning around to me saying, look at all these people, I can't believe it. 14,000 of them, Jerron Annis with ease defending his world championship belt. Over to you guys for questions. Boots, uh, AB Boxing News, congratulations. Um, Appreciate it. No problem. As far as your performance, how would you rate it, and what, what did you see in their ring against Ebenezer? Uh, it was a good performance, you know, a good comeback uh, fight. I've been fighting a year, so it felt good to be back in the ring. It felt good to be home. You know, the crowd was loving it. You know, I'm glad to be back. Uh, JP Miranda with LatinoSports.com. Congratulations to uh, Boots. Congratulations to Bozy. Did you find yourself at any point during the fight or even just coming out to the, to the ring in all the amount of fans, the love, and the support that you were receiving? Yeah, it was, it was dope. You know, it was a great experience coming out to, uh, you know, coming out, walking out in front of my friends and family, supporters at this big arena. You know, it was, it was a blessing. I was, I was taking it all in. Our second, secondary question. Oh, no. oh, oh, did he? Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> hey, yo. Excuse my French. Miss uh, um, Eddie Hearn said that he had, you guys had a face uh, time with uh, the Exit Sleep um, and, and discussed the fight, possible fight with uh, Bud Crawford. Yeah. If that fight was next, would you be interested in fighting that fight at 154 pounds? And like I always say, I don't care. I, I just want to fight the top guys, the best guys. They're going to bring the best side out of me. And, not these, these guys that's on that lower level. You know, when you fight somebody that's sharp and good like you, you know, it make you better. Who knows, you know, the fight could be easier, you know, when you fight somebody on your level or, or it's supposed to be up above your level. Uh, James Bell here at the Boxing Source. First off, that was well, and that's one. Uh, but my, uh, my question to you is, uh, reference to David Avdizia, Uh what did you see from him in those first couple of rounds where you were able to make the proper adjustments because he was looking tough in those first couple of rounds, but once you got comfortable, you were able to see or get his timing down and be able to score that back down in the fifth round. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, he was he was moving a lot more than I expected him to move. You know, uh, so he's gonna come forward a little more. You know, uh, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did he do anything uh, that surprised you in the ring? Any adjustments you had to make? That's the first question. And the second one is talk to us about your last fight being at, in Atlantic City at, at the Boardwalk Hall and then coming here to a, an arena where, according to your promoter, fans were still lining up to buy tickets as you were walking out to the ring. Yeah, um, well, your first question, um, and really. I mean, I seen everything he was doing. I just that's just me being, you know, my time being all low up. Like I said, I didn't think my time was gonna be up, but it was, you know. But um, I seen everything my pop was telling me, telling me to catch and slip. I just my time was just off a little bit, but everything be good, you know. Next time be better and sharper and you know, on point. And uh, but yeah, like you said, um, coming from the fighting the EC in a small arena and then coming here to fighting to Philly in my hometown to a big arena, definitely a big difference. You know, uh, it's way better. You know. Way better atmosphere, you know. Um, and I'm glad I was able to do it, you know. They put on a show in front of my friends and family. Hey, Duran, two two quickies over here. Go ahead. Hey. Oh. So uh, the first one is obviously I've been talking to you for years and years, and uh, you've dropped about this moment, you know, fighting here in this arena. Was it everything that you thought would be? Yeah, it was every, it was everything. You know what? I ain't even gonna say that. Uh, <laughs> you just got it started with no Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was, it was, it was, it was great though. You know, it was everything. You know, I, I always thought it was gonna be. You know, like I said before, I, I had just rung the bell here in March. You know, uh, for the Sixers game, and I told my security, I was like, yo. I saw myself as police out, and uh, a month later, did the partnership. Uh, Eddie brought me home, you know, and you know, I did it. You know. And the second one, when that fifth bell and you went to end the round, did you think that uh, the fight was over? What were your thoughts going back to the corner? And were you surprised that the fight was uh, done after the fifth round? No, I knew I knew I was going to stop him. I was just, 
every round I, I felt him breaking down and decreasing, you know, um, but I, I definitely knew I was going to stop him. It was just a matter of time, you know, I just had to get in my bag a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, um, pick it up a little more, you know, and that's about it. Yo, Boots, um, Miguel with Town Hill Sports and Entertainment. Um, everybody's been asking about grades for your performance in the ring, but uh, I just want to ask an um, orthodox question. Uh, you know, it's your first fight with Eddie. Mm -hmm. um, you're here at home. You had a great sellout crowd. Obviously, you were excited. You said um, it was a dream come true. Can you just give Eddie an uh, uh, early grade for your first fight with him in the Eddie, an early grade? Do you, you want me to give him a grade? Give him a grade as a promoter. Uh, so right. far. At A plus, 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 plus. What about you? What about you, Bozy? <laughs> I, I, the great I give is 10. <laughs> 10, 10, 10, 10. I'm so glad we're, we're, this is live. And, and, what, is, <laughs> and what about and what, listen, what, Eddie, uh, Eddie uh, he know what he's doing, man. He's one of the greatest uh, promoters out here today. He knows exactly what he's doing, man. That's why you see a lot of uh, fighters is coming to him. You know what I mean? And a lot of them follow behind books. I think I'll say this as well. You know, they say that a trainer is only as good as his fighter. I'm not, you know, but also a promoter is also only as good as his fighter. And the reality is, is you need quality fighters. You need a big TV deal and you need great fighters. And, you know, what we saw tonight was just, I think that, you know, I said to you guys, I'd love to take all the credit and boost the but no one anticipated that, honestly. You know, we were in a coin flip to do the Leah Chorus or here, and it was like, let's go big. We've got to make a statement. You know, I'm thinking, oh, let's do seven, eight thousand, please, please. And then all of a sudden, it's like ten, and the, old, the top tiers open. And then, like, honestly, they were queuing on his ring walk out there tonight. Like, it was, it was unbelievable. And I just love it. You know, I love just looking around and just standing in the ring and watching boots come out. You know, so, and it, we've done so many homecomings, and it ain't easy. You know, and I know that he felt his timing was off, but also, you know, you're looking around and he's smiling and he's here and he's there. So it's hard, you know, you really have to be in a fight. You've got to be real zoned in. And a lot of that comes from knowing the opponent's dangerous, I think, as well. But it's difficult on a homecoming, you know. Done so many events, and Joshua, where he's sort of walking out. It's like, whoa, whoa, come on, you know. And that was a great experience for him tonight, because next time he's in, in front of a crowd like that, it will be a much bigger test. <laughs> Oh, uh, Boots. How you doing, man? Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate you, you and your dad. Um, you might you say your time was off, but I, I noticed you were having some fun. What were you and Sean Porter talking about between the second and third round? No, I, I know you were talking to him. <coughs> no, I, I just laughed at him. <laughs> I think he said something. I just laughed. I just smiled. Like I'm aware of everything that be going on when I'm in the ring. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable in there. So I just he didn't. He didn't say anything, I just let I mean, I didn't say anything, he just let that in. Yeah. Uh, Joe Wood, Edge of Philly Sports. So you talk about going big. Um, obviously, Crawford is a huge step up in an opponent. Uh, is there any possibility of maybe coming back to Philly and doing one of the larger stadiums in Crawford? Oh, that'd be nice. Across the road, you know. Look, just, just to make it clear, for me, the number one priority is to unify the division. Right? Because... He's going to move to 54 at some point. But you don't really want to go before you've taken care of business. So we know that, you know, and, and that's when he, I said the conversations with his excellencies tonight, where he said, look, do you think Boots will fight Crawford? I said, yeah. Send a contract. I said, yeah. Here's what he said. Send a contract. Send the contract. Send the contract. Yeah. Send the contract. Yeah. So that's for next year, but we're going to fight again in October, November. And I said to his excellency, maybe if you want, we'll go co-main event on Bivol Betterbeer in October out there, you know? Or we can come back here, but I'll tell you what, you know, I've, I've not thought about that. I mean, him versus Boots at the ballpark. Him versus Crawford at the boot ballpark, fuck me. I mean, his table's about to jump jump up in a minute. That's got me really excited. <laughs> 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 I'm just learning. Right. Slowly. Yeah, I'm say that first. Congratulations on the on the win. Um, this is Najee from Cigar Talk. Um, I hate to be this guy, but it's, it's viral on Twitter. Terrence Crawford uh, put out a tweet. He said, uh, "World class fighter, 
Um, he, he was questioning your status as a world-class fighter. I just wanted to get the, you know, your reaction to that, both uh, Bozy and Boots. What you mean? Yeah, he, he just put out a tweet, said, world-class fighter, Han, the double standards are crazy. And he had it, Eddie Earn. World-class Han, what does he, he mean? Yeah, he said world-class fighter. I guess he's trying to say if you're a world-class fighter. I get it. It's just viral. If he wanted to fight, he would have seen it 47. He obviously said, he already said, he already said, he said he wanted to move up and come as being undisputed for 54 or something like that. But he said he'd fight Tank at 47. Yeah, he definitely did say that too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We ain't worried about Crawford. Right now, we ain't worried about Crawford. We're going to clean 147 now, and then we're going to move to 154. If he's there and he got a belt, we coming after him. Right. Simple as that. Simple as that. David Belanger, Sports Talk Field of Boots. Can you talk about your entrance tonight, especially going with the Undertaker theme? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's my thing, though. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, Undertaker, you know, uh, that's. That's the walkout. When you hear that, you know you know what time it is. It's work time. CBG. Um, Maurice Jones spoke on his boxing here. First of all, congratulations on your homecoming boots. We know a lot of guys who's having uh, homecoming. They failed. You know, you just see Matias didn't put on a great performance. And uh, this this is a two part question. First one goes out to your dad, Coach Bozy. Um, you predicted five. Yeah, four or five. Told you, you said it. Four, you said no later than five. Well, you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. That's right. So uh, we're gonna need those lottery numbers to get on the mat because you were spot on the money. Yeah. And yeah. Um, two boots. Um, we seen that he was a little bit difficult at some points. You know, he tried to go in there and bang a little bit, but you know the body shots started to work work on, in your favor. What was it that you noticed at certain points in the fight? Like, okay, I know he can't handle my power. And just listening to your dad in the, in the corner, that you know you can work smarter, not harder. Uh, I, I, like I said before, I, I, every round I felt like he was just decreasing. And uh, my pop, when I came back to the corner, my pop kept saying, "Just uh, have fun a little bit. You know, don't look for." It. And I wasn't looking for. It. I just I was chilling, like you know, I was in there just trying to find my groove. You know, get back in the groove. And, uh, and I, I wound up catching him and start having my fun a little bit in four or five rounds, the fourth and the fifth round. And uh, that was it, you know, that's what she wrote. Oh. oh, okay. Chris Murray from the Philadelphia Sunday Sun and from WURD Radio. We like, we love to have you on the show at some point. But my, my question to you is, your father said last year that, you know, there are so many, lim so many levels to your potential. For you to come out, you know, somewhat, you know, after that year of layoff and put on the performance, that you put on tonight. I mean, what is? What, how do you feel about how you know how good you can be in you know at, at this level? Uh, I feel like they're gonna be phenomenal. Like I said, um, so for a year, um, and I got many more tools and many more things. You know, in my arsenal, I just gotta you know get the opportunity to you know show it against show it against a, you know top guy. So. And Bozy, what are, you, what are your thoughts about that? Just the, looking at tonight and just seeing, you know, just really how good. That, not a, a little bit of ring rust, but he, you know, but, but, but he, he, it was an impressive finish. Uh, I, I thought he did a great job for being out uh, a year, you know. And um, I told him to do that, what he was doing inside. I told him to fight him inside, break him down inside. Then I told him to box a little bit, you know, move him, break him down. And I told him eventually he was going to wind up uh, stopping. I mean, but I know he's gonna quit. If he really wasn't gonna quit, he's gonna get knocked out cold. Hey, Bullets, over here. What's up? Right. Hey, how you doing? Uh, mm -hmm. Great, great win tonight. Um, it's uh, Vince Dariah Boxing News 24. Um, initially, you were supposed to fight uh, Crawley, mm -hmm. and then uh, Avenesian stepped in. Um, describe the process you had to go through as far as your training for a different opponent. It wasn't no different, you know. Like I always say, we got uh, we got every style in in my camps. We got southpaws, orthodox, pressure fighters, boxers, tall, short, everything. So we prepared for anything because you never know what a guy might do. Like like tonight, Amnesian really wasn't really putting pressure like that for for real. He was coming, but he wasn't. He was walking 
before. He was on before. He wasn't on before like how he usually do. So, you know, uh, everybody, every, every time somebody comes in, they change their whole style up. Yeah. So, you know. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure about you, but. <laughs> Yo, last question. <laughs> last question for Boots. Yeah. Uh, Boots. Any thoughts? So, not non boxing related. Donald, Donald Trump I got into the NPA today. He got no. shot. What are your thoughts? <laughs> what? We, we, yeah. Trump yeah. Trump yeah. Assassin, yeah, he got shot. Shot man, get shot. Two people died. Hey, right. Yeah, yeah. Butler, western part of Pennsylvania. Line. Draw a bullseye. I'll be lying. Yeah. <laughs>